Hi, today we're going to uh, change the capacitors in a burnout Samsung uh, 204B monitor. And where we start is with these two screws right on the back of the monitor. And uh, you just take these two screws out and then the pedestal comes right off. So, let me pause. Okay, you don't have to remove the screws entirely. You just loosen them and they, uh, they stay right in there little position right there. So then once you pull away the uh, pedestal uh, you're left with the front of the screen and I don't actually have a uh, usable tripod here so uh, let me try and work this the best I can. I'm going to show you how to remove the front uh, screen cover and that's part of the critical situation. It's pretty easy to do. You've got to use a putty knife but I'd like to show that display it. Okay, right here you'll see the crack along the edge. There's, it, it's a very tiny crack and I already got it started. So basically once you've got it started you just take your putty knife along and you'll hear cracks. And you just do this all the way around the monitor and this will pull completely off. So I'll get right back as soon as I circle the monitor. Okay, once you've circled completely around the monitor, uh, your front cover is going to come up like so. There is a wire that houses your switches down here. So you just want to be careful on that wire. And uh, once you lift this away from the back, which is not connected to, the wire will come free and I will show you where the plug is for that wire. Okay, the back requires a little jiggling but then the back just comes right off it's not screwed on or anything and then you'll look down here on the bottom you'll see a little plug and this is the plug you just want to remove that it was easier on my other monitor but uh, you get the idea just play with it and it'll come out sooner or later okay pause There's four screws right here and these hold your back large cover on. There's four of the silver screws. Keep these in mind because you're going to have other screws as well. Two on each side. Okay. okay, and I forgot to mention there's also two little black screws that go right here. And once you've got those two out and the four from the perimeter, you're fine. Okay, with those two screws out, now the board back will lift right off and you have access to the electronic boards below and there are four screws or five that hold this in. There's one of them, there's the other one, then there's one in the center and then there's this big silver one on the edge. Those are the four and then there's a clip over here. So I'm going to go ahead and extract those and be right back. Okay once you've got the screws loose there's three plugs. One's here, one's here. You just lift the top of the tabs, pull the plugs out and then you have a plug over here going to the green board. You just remove that. I've gone ahead and started that. Now you can pull out your board. Once you pull out your board, you'll see it's got a insulator on the back of it. And you just take a pair of needle nose pliers to the plastic part of the insulator and slowly work those out. And then you have access to the back of the board. The board itself, the two capacitors we're looking at that we're mostly concerned with, are these two right here. Now a good capacitor would have a very flat top. These have uh, slight bulges on them and of course your screen will start to go flickering and, uh, and it will eventually go dim and eventually to where it won't work at all. But anyway that's uh, how you access the board. Okay I've got the back side off so basically what you do is you hunt down the back where these two capacitors are uh, other people are replacing this capacitor and these two capacitors as well. And there's some other capacitors that I've ordered in the package of capacitors I've ordered. I've ordered enough capacitors to do uh, two of these screens and there's a whole bunch of leftover capacitors. I'm only replacing, at the moment I'm only dealing with these two uh, really offensive ones that seem to be the only problem. Uh, like I said, check the top of your capacitors if they're bulged they're bad if they're not bulged 
you know, that's up to you. It's not really that hard to take these apart once you figure it out how. So I'm just going to replace what I know is bad. Uh, I, it's less work to go in and find the bad ones than it is to try and take them all out. Okay. Okay, to remove uh, the old capacitors, basically you just touch this on the one end and on the other end you pull the capacitor off to the side. Once you've freed one side of it, you do the, you repeat the process with the other side. You just touch the uh, lead and let it get hot and you're pulling down at the same time. And eventually it'll pull free. And then once you've got it pulled free, there's your two old capacitors. You just prep your new capacitors to put in, which I'll do right now. Okay, here are the new capacitors, they're 825s. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put them back in, which, sorry about the not being able to hold the camera, I'm only getting limited helpers here. So that one is back in. Now you'll notice there's a uh, kind of a dashed line and then an undashed line. The dashed line, near as I can tell, is for negative. Uh, I've looked and prior to removal there's a white strip on the old one and the white strip on the new one and they coincide with each other as to what they should be and they seem to work on my other board so basically what you do is you just make sure that you have your polarity right then we'll flip this over like so and you have your two ends coming out of the back you just knock those over for pre-solder and uh, Repeat the process with the other one and any other uh, capacitors that you want to re replace. And then uh, you just uh, flux them up and solder them and then cut off the end of that, which I'll go ahead and do as this next section and pause. Okay, and uh, the next step, of course, is to solder all of that in, which I'm just showing you for effect. You basically know how to do that, I'm sure. If not, you just get a uh, watch another YouTube video on soldering. There's plenty of them out there. Okay. Okay, the board is uh, soldered. Uh, just going to clean that off the excess flux with acetone. There's the new capacitors. They're not sitting exactly perfectly level, but you know what? That's not the part of this monitor I'm going to be looking at, so I don't really care. Uh, as long as the connections are made and the polarity is correct, uh, these are the new capacitors and uh, everything should go back together nicely. Once the cleaning is done uh, just snap this back into place with the snaps provided and I'll continue on with screwing it back together. Okay I've put the uh, insulating black cover back on the back and now I've dropped this into place. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my plugs and attach my five screws and then we'll be ready to uh, replace the cover, the back cover of the uh, uh, the big metallic cover that everything goes inside of. So just remember your uh, black screws here. You've got I think three of those and then you've got this one big silver screw and once we put that together we'll go into the other part. Okay the screws are in now and I'm just trying to keep the camera from stopping so I don't have to keep splicing things together in the end. Okay, with the board reattached, don't forget to put your plugs back in. You've got these three plugs right here. If you forget to put them back in, you're going to end up taking everything back apart. Just check to make sure they're a good solid fit. And you've got everything that we need for that end. So now we just take the back cap right here and carefully place that back cap over. Making sure that all of our uh, hardware and everything lines up completely and I'm going to need two hands for this end of it which needs to go over right there okay yeah so now it's just a matter of attaching these four screws and reassembling the exterior okay two down two to go just trying to not lose the place okay with the screws in place uh, Next step is to take your 
plug for the front, the face. Plug that back in where it goes right here. And uh, then from there, uh, if I could get my camera man to hold my camera for me, I'll go ahead and assemble this back together in view. You just lift up the monitor carefully like this. I'm going to position it like so and then flatten it back down. Now you take your monitor back and you line up the holes in the back of the monitor with the uh, switches and plugs on here. You just drop this back into place. And when you're sure everything's lined up correctly, just press it back on. You'll hear the snaps or the front of the monitor is snapping into place. Now your monitor is fixed and completely, almost completely back together. Final step of the monitor reassembly process is to take the pedestal like so. Now remember in the beginning I told you to leave the screws in place. That's a good idea. You have a tab down below. Secure the tab first and then uh, connect your screws and screw the pedestal back into place like so. And you are almost done at this point. Now your monitor is back together and I will continue this when I've turned on the monitor and plugged it up. Thank you. Okay so here you'll find my completed monitors and they're both up and running. <clears throat> I actually did them both but uh, I made the video on the second one because I knew I'd uh, learn a lot on the first one and it probably would take a little extra out of everything. But anyway, yes, you can repair your Samsung 204B monitor and uh, replace those uh, items in there, those capacitors. Uh, I like these monitors because when I first bought them five years ago, uh, I spent 800, well, it seems like 800 on both of them. I think they were 399 each or something like that, Four, $400 or something like that. So it would be kind of a shame to lose $800 worth of monitors and compared to uh, my other dinky little monitor which is uh, timed itself out right now, uh, these have much more vivid color and definition and everything. So yeah, if you've got an old Samsung monitor, before you uh, throw in the towel on it, just crack it apart and take a look and if you see uh, any of a bulge on any of those capacitors in there, that's more than likely the problem. It's a pretty easy fix. Altogether, I bought $12 worth of stuff, including shipping uh, from a company. I'll probably put that down in the notes where I bought it from because I can't remember it right now. And uh, altogether, with shipping was $12. It gave me all the capacitors I needed and then some. And there were a bunch of capacitors I decided not to replace, basically, because I was getting help with the uh, job and I was borrowing someone else's soldering equipment and didn't want to tie it up for too long. I figured the big problem was the big capacitors. It seems to be in everyone's issue. So uh, that's about it. That's all you got to do. Uh, thank you. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helps you out. And please leave a comment on the video. Thanks.